So let's uh, begin with the session today and uh, again welcome to the IoT small webinar today on which uh, we'll be discussing about Internet of Things IoT. So let's begin. First thing that we'll be discussing if we talk about the first word into this three word phrase that is Internet of Things that why we use Internet every day. So I'd like to ask you people why do we use Internet like for which purposes we use internet daily. We connect to internet and we do a lot of stuff every day. Every day around uh, every second professional in the world, second IT professional, second educated professional in the world connects to internet for doing something. Or even you can say around 10, minimum 10% 10 of the people inside the country at least connects to internet every day. So for which purposes, for what, uh, for doing what and for which reasons we connect to internet, we access internet and what we do exactly internet so if you ask you a couple of questions then uh, like I like, like to know some of the replies by you so you can apply them in chat books like some of the users of internet why do we access internet and what do we do exactly on internet some of the answers are like uh, you you will not be able to see actually in the, this portal uh, you will only be able to see my reply and uh, whatever I reply to you. So each of us uh, in this portal that's not allowed. So yeah, I'll read out uh, the reply. I hope I'm properly audible at any point of time. If you feel that I'm not audible properly, let me know. At any point of time, if you feel that I'm not properly audible, you can let me know. Okay, so the ITI is uh, social networking, email, support, Google, right, in email, Yes, and we do book tickets, we do online banking kind of stuff. So if you talk about the use of internet that we do exactly in everyday life is something that uh, we access internet for social networking, we access internet for information gathering, information accessing, and we access internet for providing and accessing some services. For example, we connect to our friends on Facebook, Twitter, Google, plus LinkedIn, connect to professionals on LinkedIn, and we spread data, we create data and we spread data on social networking sites. We access information from the websites that are thousands of websites there on Wild Wide Web. We access information about any company, we access information about any topic, any knowledge, any, any technique, any process on internet. We Google it up, we get the information, we access information, we connect to internet every day to access and gather information. And one of the other use of internet which has revolutionized complete industries in India or complete IT world is services. A lot of people provide services over internet. For example, buying and selling something, providing tickets, booking tickets, entertainment services, educational services like we what we do in booking buses, booking cabs, booking food grocery, anything, whatever services we used to use offline, now we use online, so that's what comes into providing or accessing some services over internet. So one of the use of internet is providing and accessing some services. But in all these three uses, use cases, if you see, uh, the use of internet that we do, we humans always access internet, we do access internet and we create data, we gather data, we access information, we connect to people, and everything is handled by us because uh, Till now it was so limited, the reason was because internet was so limited, it was not free kind of stuff, it was not, uh, even if it is not yet free, but it's quite cheaper. Accessing information, the tools that you need to access information, that you need for accessing information was not that available, now it is easily available. The sensors, the computers, the boards and uh, you can say the infrastructure for accessing internet is quite cheaply available. So now. It it is even possible that we can allow our devices around us, machines around us, gadgets around us, physical objects around us, buildings, fan tube, like anything, anything around us to access and gather information and connect to internet. And that's what is all about Internet of Things. Internet of Things is all about when we come from the layer of humans where humans used to access internet for these all purposes and some more categories might be there. From that layer up, we come up and uh, we allow machines, gadgets, physical objects, devices, around us to connect to internet and do something that what we do in all these three use cases. 
So you see these three use cases of internet, these are these all are creating a big industry of internet. If you talk about the big giant companies in the world, social networking sites, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, they all run because of social networking because humans connect to internet, humans exchange data. We access information. For example, let's say that your, your bike is going to be damaged and your bike is going to have problem sometimes or let's say your computer is not working out, your software is not working out, what do you do exactly is you go on internet, you google it up, you find a solution, you apply the solution. We access information, we consume information, we consume data and we do something, we do our work. And whenever we connect to internet, whenever you access these two things first and second one, we always create data. When you like something on Facebook, when you do anything on Facebook, Facebook analyzes what you like, what you don't like. Google analyzes what you search, what you don't search, what you don't like and what you're looking for exactly. Based on that, they track you, they gather data from us and they show us a lot of advertisements. That's why you might have all analyzed that. Uh, when you search something on Amazon, you get the advertisement of that particular product in the next three days because when you search something on Google or Amazon, any website that you create data that you want this thing. When you connect again, they track you and they keeps on showing advertisement to you. Okay, at any point of time, if you have any question, you can raise your hand as well. Let me know if you have a question and you want me to unmute yourself. Okay. Uh, Ms. Milal, I mean, uh, ma'am, uh, I hope you don't have a question. I mean, if you have a question, you can just ask me in chat box otherwise you can let me know in chat box if you want me to unmute yourself okay and we'll come to all the aspects so I'll wait to all of you I mean, I'll request all of you to wait for some questions till next half an hour and after that we can discuss the questions part okay and other than that other than questions part if you have any other issue or something you can just let me know in the chat box I hope I'm properly audible as well to all of you okay so we were discussing that day Whenever you access internet, we access internet for social networking, we access internet for information gathering, we access internet for services. But in all these three cases, in all these three examples, we humans connect to internet, we humans gather data, we humans access internet. But as internet has become so cheaper, we can also allow the devices around us, machines around us, gadgets around us to access internet, to connect to internet, to create data, to gather data and to consume data to generate data. I hope the screen is properly visible to all of you, right? The three categories over here are properly visible to all of you. Okay. So in every case we consume data and we humans do that. And it is also possible like like all the social networking sites, all the social networking websites, big companies are working because of you humans like to internet. Information are being created, information are being consumed whenever we do something on the internet. The big companies like Google and Facebook, they consume our data, they consume and they track our data and they do marketing. And most of the big companies that you'll find in today's world, they are all data driven companies. And based on that, they provide better services. The third category is based on that, they provide better services. Based on that, they sell something like Amazon uses recommendation system and Google uses your tracking data. Based on that, it keeps on tracking you. Facebook uses your interest. And based on that, it keeps on showing you some advertisements. That's what makes Facebook on. That's what makes LinkedIn on. That's what makes Twitter on. And that's what makes other social networking sites on. That's what makes Google on. Okay, all these big companies are earning because of we creating data. When we connect to internet, we create data. And as it is now possible to allow our devices, machines, gadgets, physical objects around us to connect to internet, all those machines, physical object, data, uh, and devices are going to even network with each other are going to even create data and they are also going to access or provide some services. So you see the big market as it is created for humans accessing internet, humans oriented services, human oriented data gathering, humans oriented data analysis, human oriented data mining and marketing, the complete industry grown out, social networking, data analysis, data marketing, that complete industry is again going to revolutionized and regrow you can say based on the devices generating data the machines creating data the machines connected to internet the physical objects connecting to internet and that's what iot is all about iot is all about making devices and gadgets around us connect to internet generate some data and the big companies are going to use that data are going to provide some services based on that data so iot is all about making devices around us connect to internet securely create data securely generate data by consuming less power consuming less bandwidth and consuming less 
energy, you can say infrastructure or computing resources. So if you talk about some of the IoT devices that are existing earlier, so some of the machines which connect to internet or devices which connect to internet, so ATM machines or smartphones can be called as a simple machines which connect to internet. Like we have a simple, like uh, earlier we used to have simple keypad phone in which uh, we used to have some, some keypad sort of stuff. And then we have uh, now as something, a smartphone which has a touch screen and which has a lot of sensors and which connects to internet. But both of them does the same work because here also we do use for calling purposes. And here also the main use of this phone is for calling purposes. But now it has much more features. The features are something that it can help us to gather information from internet. It can help us to social network with other smartphones and that allows us to social network with the, to network with the users who are handling those smartphones. Create data, gather data, help us in tracking, analyzing, buying, purchasing, doing banking, everything we do on this. And you see the complete Android app development industry, the complete app development industry, the complete uh, big billion dollar companies like Uber and Ola are only dependent on one IoT device that is smartphone. The all big companies are running on this IoT device, this gadget that is smartphone. And the complete transaction industry, online payment industry is running only because of ATM machines. First ATM machines come out and then credit cards and debit cards and all those stuff. So you see, these two key IoT devices, these are one of the early IoT devices, one of the early stage IoT systems, IoT machines, has created this much big market. And it is estimated that, that as these things are becoming cheaper to connect to internet, the connectivity for devices, physical objects, is going to be kind of very easy to allow them to connect to internet, this industry is going to grow with a very big pace and it is estimated, that this is not my estimation and not my analysis, it is estimation analysis of Gartner, McKinsey, JP Morgan, all this big analytics company that by 2020, Cisco, IBM, Microsoft and all, you can just go on Google and search about the IoT analytics and predictions. They say that by 2020, but we'll be having around 40 to 80 billion devices, machines connecting to internet. In fact, in 2011 itself, the population of the world was 8 billion and the devices connected to internet on the world, on this earth was 11 billion. It, we have, it has already overcrashed or overcrossed our population. By 2020, we'll be having 40 to 80 billion devices or objects connected to the internet. So per human being, it's going to be around 8 to 10 devices connected to the internet. Now, what kind of, you might imagine what kind of devices they're going to be and why do we do that? Okay. At, uh, at, at, at this point of time, you might be having some idea of IoT is something, IoT is something connecting devices to internet, but you might be having something like, it is kind of luxury, but uh, you might not have surety that how it is going to create a market, why people are talking about it, why, or it is just a shadow, or you can say a, a pseudo image that has been created in the market, that kind of image you might be having. So the main objective of it is something, uh, to clear that image and uh, to clear that uh, scenario part, like to clear what, are the things or factors that are going to make IoT industry grow up? Or is it the real requirement in the market or something a pseudo image has been created? Yeah, we were coming back to the, coming to that point. Now you see, if we talk about if we, we talk about this questions, uh, one more another question I am having is in India, if you talk about last uh, if you name me 10 companies which grew up very rapidly in the last five years. If I ask you the name of 10 companies which grew up rapidly in the fi last five years, the new companies which grew up like anything, the growth rate of those companies were like anything, the big companies in India or any small company, but the growth rate were very high. So please name me 10 companies in the chat box. I'm waiting for your answers. Name me 10 companies in, in India which grew up very faster with a very faster rate or you can say something uh, very faster growth rate. Any 10 companies you can name me, you can apply me in chat books. Any 10 companies in India which grows very faster growth rate in any parts of India. Okay, one of the replies OLX, correct. Okay, Uber, yes. And we have Paytm, okay, Redbus, Ola, all right. Flipkart, okay, yes, Amazon.in, yes, 
Okay, so you see these are a couple of answers and uh, Patanjali or like yes possible and uh, Snapdeal yes as well. Okay, so you see most of the companies into this which grow up with very faster growth rate in India, they are all internet driven company, they are all data driven company. All these companies are internet based company, online companies, most of them are. Even the growth rate of these online companies is faster than the companies which are existing from last 20 years like Maruti Suzuki. The growth rate of Maruti Suzuki is not that high as the growth rate of the companies like Paytm and Red Bus is in last two years and five years. Growth rate, I'm not talking about the complete turnover. Turnover is way, way over high in, in case of Maruti Suzuki or any other old companies. But the growth rate, the amount and the growth and the amount of investment, I mean the return over investment. So growth rate is very high in last five years on most of the IT companies, even the, all of the all of you which are the companies that you are named up, they are most of the internet oriented company and why they could grow is they are all data driven company. They all consume the data created by humans. Even we talk about the big companies inside the world, Facebook, Google, they are all data driven model. They are all business are, are data driven model. But only online companies could take the leverage of this data driven model. Only online companies can consume this real time data of their customers. They can track their customers. For example, when you do a recharge on Paytm, Paytm knows that when your recharge is going to finish, they keep on tracking you, prompting you up that you can do another recharge. Your bill cycle has come up. When you book ticket on Redbus, Redbus comes to know that you're traveling from Hyderabad to Bangalore, you can travel back from Bangalore to Hyderabad. They track your customers, they track their customers directly. They understand what the customers want exactly. Offline companies could not do this. Because offline, Martha Suzuki never knows that who is driving the car. IoT is going to provide this big leverage, this big platform to all the offline companies. And that is why all the offline companies are driving towards IoT use cases. Because IoT is going to make their things, their devices, machines generate data. And when it will generate data, these companies will be able to grow with that much faster growth rate as the online companies could grow in the last couple of years because of internet connectivity between their customers directly. Most of the companies that we have seen so far, they are all they are all data driven model. They are all service based company. Most of them are service based company. They provide services and we humans consume it. But talking about manufacturing company or product based company, their data is not every time real time data is not connected to internet. IoT is going to make that thing. IoT is going to make that thing possible. Okay, Minal will come to that point. Okay, we'll come to that point. The questions part will be having. I'll request you, uh, all of you, to just, uh, I mean, get the idea of uh, the exact uh, what exactly IoT is all about, and uh, why it is having that buzz and why it is going to be important. Okay. So just I'll uh, request you to have some some minutes more. I mean, ten minutes more. Wait for ten minutes more, and then we'll come back to your questions. If I don't come back, please. Uh, repeat your question again. Okay, I hope that's fine. All right. So the the point was something. The all IoT is going to provide this big, big platform to all these offline companies. For example, HP has recently launched a uh, HP printers. For example, let's say you have a ten-story building. I mean, you are into an IT company, ten-floor building IT company, and in that you have twenty offices or more than that even possibly. So in every office or in every let's say you have a big university and in university you have around 20 departments and departments and every department must be having a lot of printers. So what HP analyzes is like managing the cartridge of those printers are a big ticket thing, complex part. Like in every printer when the cartridge is going to finish and repeating the cartridge, changing the cartridge is kind of a ticket thing. What HP did is they, in new generation of printers, they have generated printers whose cartridge are connected to internet with two HP servers. So if in a 20 store, 20 floor IT company or a big university, there are like 100 printers, all the 100 printers will be generating their cartridge level data to the HP server. They will be analyzing that what is the cartridge level in every printer of every university or every department, every office. As soon as some cartridges are going to slow down, they'll track the data and immediately before it finishes up, they'll send the new cartridge to that particular department or that particular office. In that way, the consumer will not have to worry about the you can say, I mean, the management of cartridge, or you can say the, the maintenance of your their product. The consumer will not have to worry about the maintenance of their product. So they are providing better services while connecting their products and into the internet so that they can real time track what their what people pro are facing, what kind of problem people are facing with their products. This is one of the example how why how industries are take using IoT use cases in their products. Another example. The government management, as soon as the cities are going to become more 
urbanized, more pop, uh, having more population, IoT is going to become play a very key role in solving the proper uh, problems of city and managing the city in a proper way. Like one of the like one of the buzz in India is smart city development. And a couple of examples I'll share with you related to smart city development, where, which uses IoT use cases. Like Barcelona, Barcelona is one of the earliest smart city in the world, and uh, Cisco manages the smart city management of Barcelona. What they analyze is in Barcelona, like they are developed people. They are, most of them they have their own car, their own they have their own vehicles. So what do they analyze that when people travel from one part of city to another part of city, they might not know which is the parking space available over there. For example, let's say you're traveling from Delhi to uh, like Dwarka to let's say Dwarka part of Delhi to let's say Tilaknagar in Delhi, you might not know which are the possible pa possible ways possible parking spaces where you can park your car. Let's say you're traveling from Amir Pet in Hyderabad to Lingampali in Hyderabad, you might not know where you can park your car. So people might not know that. So what people do is people search for parking spaces. When people search for parking spaces, they slow down their car. And when a lot of people slow down their car, that creates a traffic for other people in back. So they analyze that 40% of the traffic caused in Barcelona is because of people searching for parking spaces. And they cannot, they cannot stop people for searching parking spaces, right? They cannot stop people. They cannot do anything with the citizens part. They cannot create rules for searching parking spaces. Like you can search only for this time or this day like that. They cannot rules. Even they, they create more parking spaces, people will not be sure that which parking spaces are full or empty. They might be on, on general parking spaces, people might, might have already parked their car. So what they decide the solution is, uh, on all the parking spaces of the city, they attach some sensors. The sensors could sense simple proximity sensor which can sense the par car is parked or not parked. It will generate some data like zero or one. One is the data if car is parked, zero is the car is not parked. It will simply send the data to the city traffic monitoring system server. The server will be analyzing the data from thousands of parking spaces throughout the city. Let's say I'm the citizen, I want to park my car, I need to open the app, Android app of uh, or mobile app application of uh, Barcelona's traffic management of parking system. Click on park now. As soon as I click on park now, it will track my GPS location. Based on that, it will track that which is the nearest parking space, which is empty, connected to the traffic monitoring server. And it will reply me that whatever the near parking space which is empty and route my car and show me the route to that so that I can simply go and park my car. I don't need to worry about which is the empty parking space, which is the proper parking space, which is not proper, which is authorized parking space, which is not authorized parking space. I don't worry about that. I just need to use that app and they, are, they have already connected parking spaces to internet, to the server. Now you see in this case, parking spaces are talking to internet. Parking spaces are generating data connecting to server. This is what IoT is all about. This is what connecting physical objects around us to internet to gather data, to let them generate data, and we consume data to provide better services. I hope I'm clear with this example. So, if you talk about what exactly IoT is all about, so IoT can be defined according to Wikipedia that it is internet networking of devices, physical objects, which enables these objects to collect and exchange data. The main you see, uh, if you have some misconception that IoT is all about smart home and you control your tube light from your smartphone, so IoT is not only limited to that. IoT is far more than that. The IoT industry is far more than that in today's world. So IoT industry is all about let the device connect to internet and let it generate data. And we consume that data to provide better services. When a device can generate data is when it is embedded with sensors, actuators, software, electronics and network connectivity. When it has sort of features, for example, let's say your general phone and a smartphone, the difference between your normal phone and a smartphone is that your normal phone do not have sensors like touch, gyroscope, accelerometer, light sensor, proximity sensor, general phone do not have, the keypad phone do not have, and the smartphone have that. General phone do not have the small computer like RAM and flash memory and processor, your smartphone do have that. Your simple phone do not have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, keypad phone, but a smartphone do have that. So the basic features are sensors, embedded system or like microcomputers, okay, and network connectivity protocols like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and the operating system part like Android or software into that. So that is what makes a simple device connect to internet. We'll talk about that, what you need to design. How, how do you design an IoT device? So the simple definition of IoT is all about making physical objects, dis devices, gadgets, machines around us to connect to internet and get generate data and consume data as well. I hope I'm clear with the idea of IoT.
the question is why now why people are, are talking about IOT in these days all right so one of the answer is uh, because uh, one of the answer is something that uh, big companies that is you can say manufacturing hubs okay they cannot grow as the service based company or internet based company can grow so iot is going to help these big giant companies like all the big manufacturing companies to grow and analyze their product data in real time and provide services to the people for example ford is a big car manufacturing company and recently ford has collaborated with ibm watson iot and uh, like it's not recent it's been around more than 6 months and in fact a year i guess and uh, what they did exactly they, in the new generation of smart and connected cars what they did is exactly uh, they analyze the problem that if you are driving a car and if your car is getting stuck at some point in highway you might not know before the car is going to be damaged you might not know before the car is going to have problem and once the car stops or it starts creating problem then only you come to know something is damaged something has to be changed before that you cannot know in that that's what the problem people generally face with car it gets stuck on highway and you, you then you stay helpless okay or anywhere if it stops up you stay helpless there what they did is for the solution to that is in the car and different parts of engine they connected a lot of sensors over there and let all the sensors generate data about every part of the engine every part of the different braking system and uh, uh, controlling system the ventilation part everything let all let all the part, sensors in the car generate data to a device gateway that device gateway was connected to the ibm watson iot server so every car of ford it will be generating some data to the ibm watson iot server in real time and if some part of your car are going to be damaged you will not come up to know about that before that ibm watson iot server will come to know about that it will analyze that it will also analyze that in what amount of time let's say in 10 days 5 days 6 days this part is going to be damaged it will prompt you that in next year 5 days it is going to be damaged if it has to be replaced and your car is under warranty it will also concern connect to the nearest service center of ford and ask them to make that uh, part which has to be exchanged pre available and then reply you again to get it exchanged so that you will not have to wait in queue at the port service center for getting your car part changed and getting your car serviced so that part is already arranged then they'll prompt you that this part is arranged or if it's your car is not into warranty they'll show you offers that this much offer is there you can get your part part exchanged before it gets damaged because before it gets damaged they can get you a change in low cost after exchanging after getting damaged it is no use for ford as well before it is damaged they can repair it up so before it is going to be damaged they can help you out to get it exchanged at low cost so consumer will also be benefited ford will also be benefited so this is how they are providing better services and tracking the products of this in in inside the city with the customers and providing better services to the customers of ford this is all about connecting cars to internet connecting cars generate data engine generate data different parts of engine generate data braking system generate data tires generate data everything generating data and connect to internet so this is why manufacturing hubs and big companies are going to prompt priority with their products and services their devices second is government uh, like we have seen one of the example of uh, the smart city management using bus like barcelona traffic management but let's say that in urban cities it's going to be like cities like mumbai delhi and hyderabad which has around thousands of societies it's quite hectic to manage the garbage and waste management system inside the city because you might agree with one point of mind that if there are hundred societies in a city different part of society might generate garbage with different frequency it might possible one society might fill the garbage bin three times a day one society might fill it once in three day the frequency might be different in different parts of the society so collecting garbage to keep the city clean is kind of a big challenging task so in that case uh, what, what some of the city in new jersey and some other cities has implemented is they connected some level sensors with the dustbins that can analyze that how much dustbin is filled and which can then connect to the city waste management center server it can prompt that which dustbin plays in which part of city are how much filled based on that the city waste management system can route different uh, uh you can say special garbage collecting vanes on different uh, routes so that it can collect the garbage from those those bins and it can also save the electricity and consume consume the electricity by just prompting the nearest uh, vane which is near to the fill filled up or you can say full garbage bin so a garbage bin or a dust bin is simply having a level sensor which is connected to internet and take telling that yes i am full please keep me empty 
that's what dustbin is connected to internet. All the dustbins inside the city can be connected to internet. They can be analyzed that which dustbins are full, how much they are empty. Based on that, they can be emptied up by the garbage collecting van in nearby. So amount of fuel consumption, amount of time consumption, and the cleanliness, everything is efficient. So government is going to use this IoT use case for smart city development, for smart uh, uh, use case development. Okay, and there are a couple of more reasons. One of the use cases, uh, case study that I'm having is. Uh, let me check it out. I'm having that. I'm not sure of it actually. All right. Okay. Let me check with that. I possibly might be having it. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. I am. I'm having it. Whitney Bowes or uh, Silver Who Qualical case. Yes. So Qualical is kind of a company in which is a lime industry. Okay. Kalikal is a kind of company which is, I'm going to show you a case study of Kalikal. So Kalikal is a kind of lime industry and they have analyzed that, uh, like they have, they're having a problem that every six months they have to change the blast furnaces because blast furnaces used to get damaged and they could not analyze because blast furnaces do have temperature around 100 degrees Celsius or something more than that even and they could not analyze what is the problem with the blast furnace and they always have to, they, they analyze that they always have to change every six months the blast furnace systems of that. So they are a simple lime industry based industry and lime based lime manufacturing industry kind of stuff. Okay, so they, they had some lot of problems. They could not uh, maintain each and every part of their industry in a very small time. So what they did is they, they give a project to a company called uh, Kelly, uh, which is having an intelligent platform called Mosaco. So what they did is they attached a lot of sensors. Okay, they a lot of attach a lot of sensors with different parts of the glass furnace. To optimize the blowers or blast furnace operating condition, increase their lifespan, and recognize the advanced sign of failure. For example, let's say a lot of sensors are connected, so they can analyze that what is the quality or condition of the blast furnace, how much air is going to be there inside, how much uh, temperature is there, how much production rate is getting, getting up. All those things they can analyze with those sensors. They designed some mobile application for Calical, Calical Group, and uh, they designed web application, they designed analytics application using Mosaic platform. And later on, Calical Group analyzed that the problem was when they used to increase the rate of production. Okay, in blast furnace, you need oxygen, air, for the for the uh, fuel to blow up. Okay, to burn. So when they used to increase the rate of production, the amount, the hole in from which the light was passing was very small. It was not increasing because the hole is fixed. The pipeline from which the oxygen is coming up or the air is coming up was fixed. So analyze with them when they used to increase the rate of production, the hole was not increasing. So that was consequently making the electrical system, which was stretching the air, go very high for increasing the rate of production. The electrical fan, which is used to keep air or bring air inside the furnace, has to used to become very high. And that after getting and as as the pipeline for the air was very limited, the electrical system used to get damaged every six months. And that consequently made that made damaging into the blast furnace container as well. You see, every blast furnace needs some air wing to, to burn the fuel. So amount of pipeline, the, the, the width of pipeline was limited and they, the production rate was flexible. So they used to drop down the production, they used to take high the production. So when they take high the production, the amount of air has to be high. And that was not happening. For that, for making amount of air high, the electrical system was working at very high scale. And that was consuming a lot of electricity, that was consuming, uh, degrading the quality of electrical system, that was degrading the quality of blast furnace as well. They did not know this in prior until unless they implemented this use cases attaching sensors with them, connecting all the sensors to the central server of Calical Group and they analyzing that data. So IoT is also going to change the process automation systems and the way manufacturing systems and companies work with each other. This is also an example of IoT where the blast furnace, the air wing, and uh, and the production rate, everything is connected to internet or a single server, and they are, they are analyzing that data. So also the industry, the way the industries are working, that is also going to be changed. It's not only that; even a lot of other industries are having a lot of examples. Like let's um, let's talk about medical industry. Medical industry is one of the largest consumer consumer of IoT is going to be. For example, let's say that. Uh, one of, one of the use cases, let's say that if we design smart uh, smart uh, ambulance, okay, so let's say if there is an accident on, on a particular street, 
So ambulance takes the patient to the hospital and then doctor starts the diagnosis, analysis of the patient and then start, doctor starts the treatment part. If there, are, if there are plenty of sensors with the ambulance part which can analyze the patient's condition and send that condition data to the hospital and prior so that when the patient is going to reach before that doctor will come to know what is the condition of the patient is. And doctor will not have to spend much of the time on diagnosis and analysis of patient by doing a lot of scans and a lot of analysis and a lot of tests. All those tests will be done by the time patient is taken from the spot to the hospital in between the traveling part in the ambulance itself. If the ambulance is smart ambulance and you have the smart sensors connected to that, which can be connected like pulse sensor, like uh, simple sensors which doctor uses also that can be connected to different parts of body of patient. So doctor can analyze and doctor have ready data available with him and then he can check chart the diagnosis and treatment immediately. And that will save a lot of time of doctors in medical industry. And I don't need to tell how much time is important in case of medical industry how even fraction of minutes are having importance in medical industry. I guess that you know already. So you see all the industries are going to be revolutionized only because of the use case and applications of IoT use cases. And that's why IoT is not that booming. And why IoT now is because why these things are now, it does not implement it a couple of years back because now we have cheap sensors, we have cheap bandwidth, we have cheap processors, smartphones to connect and get analyze data. We have big data analytics platform to analyze all data. We have ubiquitous wireless coverage, like Geo is one of the contributors in that, and uh, the Google Wi Fi on the illustrations, and spreading up like LoRa when networks inside the city are spreading up in very fastly, very quickly to create big networks inside the cities of the country. And that is going to create a big infrastructure to access IoT devices and IoT services. And this is what is going to drive IoT, and this is what is going to change. I mean, uh, this is why the IT use case industries, I mean, the applications are so important. So I hope I'm, I'm clear with the idea of IoT. I'm clear with why IoT is that important and why, why people are talking much about it, why the industries are concerning much about it, and uh, why it is now buzzed up and why the buzz is right now. I hope I'm clear with that. Let me, let me know if that was clear. Let me, know, let me know all of you if that part is clear. Okay, any questions so far on IoT use cases? Okay, there's a question that if you're like uh, a part is one of the attendees, uh, she's pers uh, pursuing that uh, engineering in electronics, so how IoT is going to help her? You see, like uh, we have seen the opportunities and the possibilities in IoT use cases, right? And well, we'll before falling back, I'll, I'll talk about uh, one of the other. Use cases and uh, that part. So like IoT is going to change the complete way how this industry is manufacturing industry, government bodies and service providers are, are going to work. And for these cases only, you know, uh, like if you talk about some companies like uh, some companies like Wipro, Infosys, HCL, Cognitive Data Center, or the big IT companies inside India. What those IT companies do actually is, they provide services to the known IT companies. Like you might not have heard of any product of TCS or, or let's say, Accenture, Cognigent. Okay, you might not have heard, any, heard of any product of theirs. All these big IT companies, what they do exactly is they hire a lot of people into that. And what they do exactly, they provide services to known IT companies, like services to the Martha Suzuki. I have not heard that Martha Suzuki needs some IT developers or State Bank of India uh, needs some web developers or any bank needs some security developers or web developers like that. They all have their own online banking portals. ICTC needs some web developers because they all these offline entities, government bodies and manufacturing companies, everybody does their, they outsource their IT com work to the non-IT companies. And tomorrow when all these non-IT companies, the government bodies, every of them are are going to employ IoT solutions, so who will be providing services to them is the IT companies. And that's why if you talk about the big big uh, companies throughout the world, IBM, Amazon, Google, Oracle, Intel, Azure, Microsoft, they all have their IoT platform. Let's not talk about, talk about this because these are all big companies. Okay, talking about Indian companies as well, TCS, HCL, Infosys, Wipro, Essential, Cognizant, they all have started their own IoT platforms to provide, to take IoT projects to provide services to IoT industries and IoT uh, IoT needing bodies and companies. 
So if you're looking for some career in IoT development and IoT use cases, IoT industry, this is uh, going to help you out. And uh, it is not only this company's part, it is even estimated like this is the best time to step in into this. It is even estimated by 2020 when we will be having uh, 40 to 80 billion connected objects and devices on the internet. And the IoT industry in India is going to grow from more than 15 billion dollar. There is an organization in India that is the government body, NASCOM. Okay, according to estimation of NASCOM, by 2020 we will be having around one more than 1 lakh unfilled ICT jobs in IoT. ICT is like information communication technology and that's related to much of the IoT work. And the IoT market is going to cross 15 billion dollar into 2020. And this is only Indian IoT industry, Indian IoT market. Like uh, the world IoT market is going to cross 400 billion dollar, even more than that. And we'll be part of it uh, with 15 billion dollar. So this is the main idea of uh, of high IoT industries and IoT use cases are going to grow and what kind of opportunities we're going to have with this. I hope I'm clear with this. Let me know. Okay, talking about uh, there's one more question like how can we take advantage like how can she take advantage of IoT in in finding projects uh, keeping in mind to provide benefits of society? You see, you can uh, actually in in actual way you cannot estimate uh, the solution that you can provide with IoT. Like one of the solution I'll share one of the company working with us in in financial sector that company provides loan and that company works in financial insurance sector. Now they hired one of the, uh, some of the IoT developers. Now we were amazed, like why a loan providing company is hiring IoT developers. So what they did exactly is, they are agriculture loan providing company in Ahmedabad, and uh, they analyzed that most of the they they generally provide loans to the farmers, agriculture loan. Okay, so they analyzed that uh, companies and banks hesitate in providing land, loan to farmers because farmers do not repay them immediately. What they did is exactly they designed an IoT device for the farmer. So if a farmer wants to have a loan, they'll give him an IoT device. The farmer has to plant that device in his land, in his in his farm. That device will constitute of GPS plus GSM. Okay, it will simply trigger in the land of farmer, and the farmer cannot remove it. As soon as farmer is going to remove, a sensor will be activated, and that will send a trigger to the server of their company. Let's say company is ABC, so it will send the trigger to the ABC company server. So as soon as farmer has planted that uh, that that part over there. Now they'll, uh, the GPS device and GSM device will keep on sending the location of that land that to the server of ABC company. They'll be able to analyze the farmer's land on ABC company. In such a way, they'll be able to analyze only the location of farmer's land in ABC company server. Now based on Google satellites, they used to analyze the imaging of that particular GPS location from the satellites. With the imaging part, using some artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithm, they can analyze the green index of the land of the farmer. So if the farmer is having no crop and he's coming from loan, they analyze the green index. They'll analyze that if there is actually no crop, then the farmer needs the loan. They'll give the first installment of the loan to the farmer. If the farmer is growing some crop, the green index will slightly increase. They'll analyze again the green index from satellite imaging that if the green index is slightly increasing, they'll release the second installment. If the green index is again increasing, third installment. If the green index is after increasing up to maximum, it is growing going down immediately, it means farmer has to cut the crop. Now they'll go back to the farmer to get the loan back. So in this way, they're providing surety to the loan industries, they're providing better solution to the farmers and they'll also come to know if the farmer's crop are damaged because of ran or something, farmer will not have a trouble in that case. They'll come to know before farmer come to them, comes to them that I, I have some problem. They'll come to know that the farmer is already having problem. His crops are damaged. Okay, so you cannot actually estimate this solution IoT can provide to society. So in case you want to uh, design some projects to society, you can think of some innovative and some um, some better solutions which can help the current problem in the society using IoT use cases. So like smart ambulance is one of them. Uh, this this pharma part is one of them. Smart um, like medical industry is the big one. Like connecting uh, different, let's say connecting all the hospitals inside the city, all the machines in the hospitals inside the city. So we'll come to know that if uh, ten of MRI machines are not scanned, that data you can just uh, go on, uh, put on Google on your website. So if people who are searching for MRI or some medical treatment before going to hospital and hospital and hospital and checking for a particular machine and particular treatment, they'll come to know that in which hospital they are going to get which treatment and which machines are working properly and which hospital is having what sort of facilities. 
that sort of data and easiness you can provide. There are a lot of people in India, they face a, a thousands of types of problems in medical industry, in medical treatment. Just by applying IoT use cases with medical instruments, medical doctors, hospitals, entities, even you connect a hospital building to internet, that is also generating a lot of data. So IoT is all about connecting devices to internet, let them generate data and let them create data and you analyze that data. That's what IoT provides you. I hope I'm clear with that, let me know. Let me know if I'm, I'm clear with that. Launching a new product with IoT, it's not actually a good idea. I mean, you see, it, it, it can be a good idea if you launch a, a use case of product. For example, you launch a product for businesses or industries. It can be a good idea if you're launching it at a big scale. Launching a service in IoT is a very good idea at beginning scale. If you're already a developed company, then launching an IoT based product is big, very big idea. But if you're a startup and you're launching a product, it's kind of a sort of bad idea because it will take time for adaptation into the society. Okay. In case of project, you can design some use cases and projects which relates with a couple of bodies. Like you can design some projects for gone body for a hospital, which are already big in entities, which are already big idea. For example, let's say that let's talk about some products. Okay. Let's let's see some products. So I'm gonna uh, we're gonna come up with some products. So you see some products are here. Uh, the, one of the services like uh, smart waste management in which every dustbin is connected with some some sensors and can prompt up that whether the dustbin is full or empty. Hydroponic system in which plants are uh, connected with some watering systems and plants are connected with some sensors so that you can analyze that when plants need water, when plants need not have water. Now you see these products again, smart sprinkler controlling inside the grassland, analyzing that when to water your plants, when to water your grassland, smart lighting, smart gardening, blood pressure monitoring, Okay, just connecting the blood pressure sensor with the doctor's app and analyzing that uh, the, the how much the blood pressure of the patient is. And uh, like these are a couple of products. Now you see in all these use cases and all these examples, these are all product based ideas of IoT use cases. But if you design something, but uh, for, for launching all these cases, it's a big, big uh, you can see challenge if you're a startup and if you're starting up a new company. But designing some product which are going to be associated with some, some government bodies, some companies, some hospitals. Those are going to give you a big market because consumers of these are already aware. Hospitals are already aware what they need, what they don't need. For example, if you talk, try something like blood pressure monitoring, this might be adopted because real consumers do not buy this. This will be bought by hospitals. This will be suggested by hospitals or doctors. So right now the scenario in India is if you're talking about product development, you have to develop some product which has to be adopted by something. Uh, you can say, Educational people, educated people, or some some already working industries, or some common bodies. Okay, systems development in, in in India, like product development, is one of the best idea. If you're talking about some developed countries in India, IoT system development is a good idea rather than IoT product development. Okay, for example, waste management is not a product; it's a system. Okay, traffic monitoring is a system. Okay, uh, ambulance management is a system. You're just modifying the existing. Existing service existing system to a better level. So system development is a good idea rather than the product development. I hope I'm clear with that. Let me know. I hope I'm clear with that. Let me know. Okay. So this is the main idea of IoT, and uh, like the question is like, how do we, if you if you want to design and work with this? Uh, you might have idea like how do we, how to design a device. Okay, how it works exactly and how do we design IoT device. So what we design IoT device is something we work with some, first we need is some programmable systems, some, some computers, some small scale computers like uh, programmable systems and all. We need something like uh, a lot of sensors to be attached with IoT systems. We need some network connectivity modules, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. We need some programs, some software. And we need some cloud services integration part. Okay, so if you happen to attend a course by Tectron Ventures, all of you, if you happen to attend a course by Tectron Ventures, so we train people on IoT use cases in developing IoT devices. Uh, we provide generally online courses, so you don't change your location or something. Uh, you can every day work, spend uh, around an hour or two hours of use to learn this online. We'll be providing you kits and everything. 
and using this go to training uh, us based companies portal will be training the uh, we generally train the professionals and participants across the globe and what we teach exactly in case of programmable system we train people on working with uh, some programmable systems like Arduino or Raspberry Pi. We also give overview of Intel Galileo and Radiation and we also work on ESP8266. So we, we train participants on Arduino, Raspberry Pi and ESP8266 and give overview of Intel Galileo and Intel Radiation. We train them, them on a variety of sensors like including proximity, temperature, ultrasonic and every other one. We also train on some Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module like uh, SS05, ESP8266 and some overview of Zigbee and the Sigfox. We teach them some programming languages like Python, Arduino, and uh, some other languages which can be used like Lua and MATLAB and Embedded C as well. We train them on some IoT-based cloud servers like Thingspeak, Twitter, Nordred, Adafruit, IBM Watson IoT, Amazon IoT, Twilio, Hive MQTT. We train them on protocols, okay, like MQTT, HTTP is something that the current protocol we use. We train them on protocols like MQTT, COAP, which is the current requirement in market. So if you talk about the top 10 skills that you need to have in IoT industry for becoming an IoT developers. So those skills are mentioned over here on this on this particular slide. You need to have some idea of MQTT protocol, STOAV protocol, communication protocols like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Zigbee. All right, and working with uh, Sigfox, LoRaWAN. Socket programming, TCP and UDP programming, cloud integration part, sensor interfacing and data generation, data analysis. So we train this this part on uh, in IoT use cases, and you can also scroll up about the course on IoT use case uh, on the website of in slash IoT training, and here you will be able to find the sort of uh, units that we cover: seven units spread over forty-eight to forty-five hours, forty-five, forty-eight hours. Okay, and uh, every day, like we spend around three hours. So on three hours and three into 15, 45 day, 15 days, three into 15, 45. So that's in 15 days, we'll be able to finish this course on this portal online training and we'll be sending you some hardware kits and we'll be able to perform the hardware examples. And we share the camera on that. You can check that how the hardware are connected and how do you do connections part and how do you build rules and uh, do all the stuff for, for, for doing some process on IoT use cases, interfacing different types of sensors and all. So that stuff you can analyze over here in an easy way. So if you if you have interest in this course, you can just apply for this. And uh, uh, even from any like uh, in nearby from Monday itself, third of July, most probably we are launching one one batch. So you can participate in that batch as well. Okay. Now let me know if any other questions so for all of you. Uh, there's one more question that. Uh, brief about AI connection with IoT. Yeah, you see AI is a lot more connected. Uh, you see, if you talk about uh, all the companies, what they do exactly, how they analyze data is, for example, when you go to Google and you search something, how do Google comes that you're searching about something is they use AI algorithm over there. Google is big company, largest company of application, which does use this application of, I mean, use of AI, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Facebook, like how Facebook learns your photographs of your friends, they use AI. So every whenever we connect to internet, we generate data, and all these companies use AI algorithm on that data to do some predictions, to do some description of that data, descriptive analysis and predictive analysis. That part same can be implemented with IoT. For example, you have seen the example of Calical Group. So based on Calical Group data, in amount of rate of production, the amount of air consumption, amount of electricity consumption, they could predict that how much long time this blast furnace will stay up to. After how much time you will need maintenance. So predictive maintenance can be made possible with application of AI along with IoT data. So when you want to predict the future with existing IoT data, you need AI with that. You need machine learning with that. You need data analysis with that. When you want to describe some data, let's say you have temperature data of around 10 days and bundles of data you have. Every second you are generating some temperature data. So you imagine 24. 60 minutes into a 60 seconds into a minute, 60 minutes into an hour, 24 hours a day, and 7 day data you're having. So how much number of temperature values you'll be having? So you're not going to read every every set of data. Now to provide you descriptive analysis of that data that on this day this time temperature was rising in high and low, and because of that this was the problem. That's called that's that's what we call descriptive analysis. For that you need machine learning and artificial intelligence in that. There's one more question that uh, how will we be performing like if we attend the course that how will we be performing the 
hands on see you will be having the hardware with you and uh, i'll be showing here like we'll be showing here the whosoever is the trainer from from our company will be showing you here like on the camera part in the browser so you can check that how the hardware is connected so that part is going to be quite simple and we already trained a lot of professionals on this so generally this is one of the best uh, training platform you get on go to training so it won't be any issue in this case what sort of uh, there's one more question that what sort of protocols we're going to learn talking about application layer protocols we're going to like transport layer protocols we're going to learn about tcp udp we're going to learn about http mqtt coap and uh, we're going to learn about a wi-fi use a wi-fi use of bluetooth how to use integrate and wi-fi with microcontroller and microprocessors raspberry pi processor based system controller based systems attaching different input and output devices with that also we'll be learning uart and uh, having some idea about i2c and spa protocol as well in case of hardware and wired protocol systems All right in case of uh, like wi-fi wireless protocol system wi-fi and bluetooth will be there so these sort of protocols uh, you can you can and if you want to join this course you can just apply on this link part i'm going to share the link of the course over here in the chat box so you can go to this link and uh, you will get a form to fill up there and uh, you can get the details of the course over here and uh, the form over here for, for participating in that and uh, you'll, if for more details you can contact to the customer i mean the the service support on from our company on on this uh, connect number shown over here okay now let me know if any any other question you have you can just contact to you can mail us on contact at tech.in and you can call us on 7842670309 like on this contact number as well i hope i'm clear with this let me know all of you any other questions so far okay then we we have wind up the session today and uh, looking forward to see most of you in the course and uh, thank you very much for your time and uh, thank you very much for tech from tech ventures private limited very good night thank you bye bye